Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'i. We've got a really interesting program for you today. In fact, we've got a program that I've been thinking a lot of about lately. And my guest is Gary Hooser, former state senator. And now, um, I guess you're in charge of Hawaii Pono Initiative or something like that, right? Yes. Uh, HAPA, Hawaii Progressive uh, Alliance for Progressive Action. I'm the president of the board, volunteer. Yeah, and 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 I I receive I receive your uh, emails regularly, and um, and they seem to be regularly talking about the fact that uh, that our government is not as open as it, as it used to be, and I have to tell you. Um, that you're not the only one sending me uh, messages like that. It's happening all over and from people, and usually, how do I say this without offending anybody? Usually it's the progressives <laughs> that, that, that uh, talk about the fact that government is not open because it is a progressive issue, open government is. So, and yet I'm getting emails and, and uh, things from, um, uh, the cross section of people, business people, re Republicans, believe it or not, have uh, have indicated that. Uh, so, uh, I I just wanted to ask you, Gary, you know what's happening? <laughs> what, well, why is this crescendo going on? Uh, th that is a, a great question, uh, Governor. And you know, it's, it's, it's been a slide in this direction, I think, for many years. Uh, when I first went in the, the state Senate in 2002, uh, there was uh, a lot of votes, you know, discussions behind doors, that kind of thing. But it's gotten worse and worse and worse over the years. And uh, the public is, is fed up with it, I think. Uh, important issues that uh, we can't even get a public discussion. They won't even have a hearing, let alone a vote. Things like increasing the minimum wage. Uh, well, the minimum uh, wage, uh, as I understand it, passed the, the state Senate. It did. It did. Right? The state Senate, and hats off to Senator uh, uh, Brian Tanaguchi. Uh, and not, not a huge rate uh, increase. It was a, a very modest $12. We're at 1010 right now. And he said, let's take it to at least 12 by next year, by 2022. And in the House, uh, under the leadership of uh, Speaker Psyche, and the chair of the uh, Labor Committee, uh, Representative Onishi, it has not even uh, gotten a hearing. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, uh, this, this is a very important issue to me. And so I'm going to just get right into it, you know, and, and, and we can come back. At, so I don't understand how a Labor chair would hold something like this up. I mean, where are the unions on, on this? In fact, I, I just uh, three days ago, or well, Friday, last week, Friday, one of the people who complained to me about the lack of openness was uh, was a member of the uh, of uh, one of our public worker unions, and, and and they're not prone to do that kind of complaining. But anyway, how how does it happen that a labor chairman and a speaker who ostensibly is uh, I guess labor oriented would hold up something like the minimum wage. Well, th this particular labor chair, the, the committee is labor and tourism. Uh, ah, so ah. I don't know which where the priority lies, quite frankly. Um, and I know the uh, uh, big business, certainly the uh, large businesses and uh, uh, the, the fast food industry has been opposing it for a long time. I'm pleased to say that just today, I uh, found out that the iron workers, uh, the Teamsters, uh, the ILWU Local 142, Unite Here, United F uh, Food and Commercial Workers are all coming out uh, today strongly asking the speaker, Speaker Psyche, to allow a floor vote on this uh, on the 7th. Uh, wow. Committee or no committee, they're saying, we want this voted on. Not just the minimum wage issue, that's one, there's two issues. The other one is uh, relieving uh, people on unemployment of the state income tax during yeah. the COVID period. Those are the two bills. You mean the, the, the House has, that's a no brainer, don't you yeah. think so? I mean, 
And again, they refuse to even have a hearing, even to publicly put, you have the public allow the public to come in and, and testify and then take a public vote. Uh, and as you What's know, the justification? Well, you know, the, on the minimum wage, they'll say it's, it's not the right time. The economy is not good, et cetera. But as you know, it's never the right time for some no. of the folks. And 26 other states are doing it this year. Uh, Florida is doing it. You know, it, it, it's a it's Florida a red Republic. Red Florida is increasing their uh, minimum wage, and Hawaii, blue and, Hawaii won't do it. The, at, at tw again, 26 states this year, and the, and the twelve dollars isn't even this year. It wouldn't take effect till next year. Uh, and uh, but they say it's not a good time. And on the uh, on the tax uh, forgiveness, if you would. Uh, for the people on unemployment, you know, some of those folks have been fighting for a year, and uh, the the state has really bungled it. And I'm not blaming anybody in particular, but uh, they, but they we have bungled would, it. Yeah. We have bungled it badly, and now some of these folks are going to get tax bills uh, for for and on unemployment. They're they're standing in line for food, and uh, the. the House says, well, we're not sure if the federal government will let us do this or not. And, and you and I both know if they want to do it, they'll find a way to do it. Absolutely. Uh, you know? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so it, it, it's disheartening. What, again, what could possibly be the justification for taxing unemployment benefits during a pandemic? I, 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 I'm searching for, you know, I'd like to believe that these things are done for some kind of rational reason. So, you know, I, I couldn't tell you that, that money might be part of it uh, that because it's a budget impact, even though the state, or the federal government's, you know, going to be giving us billions. Um, the, uh, maybe the, the powers that be at the legislature would rather spend that money on something else. And I, I think we should support business, small business. Yes, let's support them. Let's support public working. But let's, let's support low income working people. And the unemployed also don't leave don't leave a segment an important segment out hanging. Uh, are those and both of those bills are, are uh, uh, the the unions uh, are coming out in favor of uh, action on it and yeah, taking absolutely. it out for both these particular unions. Uh, the, the public worker unions I haven't really heard from them, uh, but these particular unions they, they did a strong op-ed piece in Civil Beat a few days ago. And then I just literally five minutes before the show started, I got an email uh, with a copy of the letter they're sending out uh, asking for a floor vote. Fine, if, if, if this is how democracy is supposed to work. If, right. if you don't like it, say no, vote against it. But don't tell us you support it and don't pass it. So let's, let's put it out so, there. Uh, just, just so people truly understand our conversation, and I am irritated enough to have just started with the content, but what we're talking about is basically these things are being held in committee, and which I, I don't think a chairman could take these kind, uh, this kind of a strong stand against two obviously uh, important bills without the support of leadership. Uh, as well. So my understanding and the complaint that I get is that this actually happens quite often uh, in, in the, at least in the, in the House, in the legislature. And it happens because uh, a few people make the decisions for the entire House. Is that your feeling? I mean, that's... No, that, that's absolutely it. The, uh, in the Senate, uh, the power, if you would, is dispersed. The, the uh, president of, of the Senate uh, is, is not all powerful because he has to please various factions within there and make everybody happy. It's more of a collaborative kind of environment. In the House, uh, it is very uh, centralized. If you read the House rules, which I just did a couple of days ago, uh, the, the speaker controls uh, the deadlines, the time, and controls the referrals. And so- He if, doesn't have a committee that helps him refer the well, bills? Or? He, he could designate a committee, but the rule said he's the one he that refers. Yeah, he refers it. 
uh, if there's a dispute about whether a referral, he has a committee, but ultimately he settles. Regardless of what the committee decides, the speaker prevails. Uh, and it's just over and over again that the power is uh, is centralized in, in one person. Well, I tell you, that's not the only complaint. So these happen to be two bills that I think are very important and that I would like to see voted on. But um, the complaints also include the fact that it seems like there is less openness, just period. Um, you know, when we when I was in office, we we passed the open records law, which which basically uh, I think you were in the Senate at that time, were you, or you just came well, in? Two thousand two to two thousand eight, I was in the Senate. Oh, okay. So this is before that. We passed the open records law, and it, it wasn't an easy thing to do. And I mean, in terms of having to put up with it, you know, as an elected official, but it seemed to have worked pretty well for. Well, you know, with a few hiccups now and then, uh, pretty well for the last 25 years. Now I'm hearing that a lot of that is not even being adhered to anymore. You know, I, I think it's it's about a mindset. And, and the mindset is not how do we have an open process to the public's benefit. The, the mindset is how do we push this through quickly with the least amount of trouble. Uh, and, and the public is seen as, as a bothersome pain in the equality, uh, rather than uh, a valuable part of the process. Uh, you know, the, uh, there was a bill uh, just recently that failed in the Senate, and lo and behold, it's stuck into a House bill <coughs> with no public notice, no public hearing, no public discussion at all. Uh, and, it, and it's just not right. It, it's about respect for the public. You know, I'm afraid also uh, that, that this remote testimony has two sides to it. I'm happy that people that live in rural areas and live on the neighbor islands can testify via Zoom. But right. also I'm, I'm concerned that this will uh, separates the public. Uh, I, I've heard that they're gonna even allow some commission meetings without even a public, a, a proper public meeting at all. Uh, and How so, do you do that and not violate the, the statute? Well, they're, they're looking at changing the statute. Uh, yeah. Uh, and again, it's, it's a mindset, it's an attitude. And, and, you know, what's happening around the nation uh, and in our state, people, people don't believe in their government anymore, you know, and we need to, we need to reverse that. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that uh, if, if more and more people speak out like yourself and like these other union leaders, that uh, people in power will maybe uh, realize that they need to slow down a little bit and uh, look out for the, the public's interest, not just their own interest. Yeah, and I, and I should confess, you know, that I am not, uh, I'm not a, like a rabbit public participation kind of guy. So when I'm having a show like this, I, you know, I think there have been a lot of lines that got crossed. <laughs> I I, th I I believe in the openness in government, and I believe that you know you should know what your legislators and what your uh, public officials are doing. But uh, and but you know to to get to the point where uh, the, such a cross section of the community is are concerned, something must be really broken. You know, I, I don't know what it yeah. is. And, you know, I have to, we, we need to give responsibility also to the majority that allows this conduct. Uh, and we both served in the legislative bodies and we know that it's difficult sometimes uh, to challenge leadership uh, because you risk maybe your committee assignment, you risk, uh, you know, having a, a bill, you're afraid of retribution. And, and just, just that the fact that there is people afraid of retribution is a bad sign. But yeah, we, need to, we need to ask uh, the rank and file to, to step up a little bit. And uh, maybe they don't have to do it in public. They can speak to the, the chair behind closed doors and say, listen, we need to hear this bill. And if a majority did that, I think they would hear the bill. Uh, and well, on these, I, if I can just add real quickly, because this is particularly what irks me. Uh, we live in a, in a, in a state 
where our government is is controlled by the by Democrats. Yeah, you know, there's only one Republican senator and only four Republican. So there's no excuse from a party perspective. You know, you watch in Washington, Washington, D.C., they're struggling almost 50 50, and they're still trying to pass this progressive know, legislation. Yeah. Uh, well, so we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, I want to follow up on that thought, you know, that idea of why Democrats are not acting like Democrats. And uh, we'll come right back right after we have a, uh, a break. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee and our guest, Senator Gary Hooser, and who is um, uh, one of the leading, I guess, um, mentors for young, uh, for not just young, but for people who want to see progressive government. Now, here we are, we're just talking about that. This is the blue state as we mentioned earlier, and a red state like uh, Florida, who you can't get much redder than that, like maybe with me, might be with Texas, but you can't get much better redder than Florida, just passed uh, some of the bills, like the increase in the minimum wage, which uh, gets held by a democratic, heavily democratic uh, House of Representatives. And, What's up? I mean, I, I, I just don't, I don't know. Do we, what, I think you just hit the nail. Why having, I'm a Democrat, you know, and I've told Republicans this, it's not my job to help them build their party. But on the other hand, I really wish they would. We really need some, we need more opposition. Uh, give me some of your thoughts on all of this. We do, I think that to, to uh... To, to keep everybody honest uh, and in a literal and figurative sense, we need competition. We need uh, watchdogs. Uh, as a, a, I, I was a former chair, vice chair of the of the party. You know, I work closely with a lot of really good Democrats, members of the party, who who work hard on putting their uh, the program together and the, setting the legislative priorities, and increasing the minimum wage to at least fifteen dollars is a number one priority of the party. But yet yeah. you can't get Democratic leaders in uh, the state house, particularly, uh, to support that, and so it's frustrating. And, and I think in, in other states, they they may frankly not be Democrats. Uh, but in Hawaii, uh, you pretty much have to have a D or next to your name to 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 run and win. Even Arizona also has a higher minimum wage than Hawaii has. Uh, right really, now. Arizona? <laughs> oh my! Uh, and so I think it's all of us that, that believe in and the fundamental values that people that, that work 40 hours a week should be able to have a safe place to live and put, put food on the table. You know, these are core values, uh, regardless of party, but certainly the Democratic Party's values. Uh, and uh, it's not happening. Uh, the open government, you know, I, I spend a lot of time, you, you mentioned that I was a mentor and, I, and that really is what I'm doing a lot right now is seeking out people who want to get involved and have a, have a calling or, or a desire to get more involved. And Tell us about that. Tell us about what you're doing and, 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 and some of the people who have successfully transitioned okay. through your efforts. We have, uh, it's a program we call the Kuleana Academy. 
which is a, uh, right now we're doing it online. Uh, we have uh, been doing it for uh, about five, five years at least. And we have a lot of uh, people who have gone through the program and it teaches people uh, skills training, how to run for public office, how to run a campaign. Uh, it teaches them about different issues uh, from a progressive slant. And it exposes them to the world of, of government and politics. And you've, you've spoken there, I appreciate that. Uh, I enjoy got, speaking there, by the uh, way. You've got a bunch of young, uh, I mean, I, I keep using the word young. Well, and that gives you a sense of my age because, you know, but you got a bunch of really exciting We, uh, we do. We have participants. Uh, uh, Representative Amy Peruso, uh, huh. who, uh, she went through our program. She's serving in the House now. Representative Tina Wildberger, Representative Sonny Gonadin. They've all gone through the program and they, they get elected on their own. We just expose them and teach them and educate uh, the nuts and bolts uh, of how it works. Uh, and then in the Maui County Council, we have four sitting members right now that have gone through a program. And I have to say, if anyone's interested, uh, you can find me at GaryHooser.com, GaryHooser.com. <laughs> and uh, my contact information's there. As you mentioned, I do an email newsletter and uh, they can sign up for the newsletter on, on joined, the join page. But what I do also is I try to tell people our government doesn't work because more of us aren't involved. So I try to encourage people, whether you're gonna run for office, whether you're gonna support somebody running or whether you're just gonna show up and testify, you must be involved. And uh, a lot of people, you know, it's sad, will say, Gary, I don't think it makes a difference whether I send an email or a call or, you know, that doesn't help, so why bother? And so right. I, I always try to tell them it does help. Uh, but when, when uh, some of the leaders in office uh, play fast and loose with the public interest and the rules and the sunshine law, it doesn't help at all. It just further uh, s creates more cynicism uh, and people don't want to get involved. And so- You know, uh, back in the, we like to talk about the good old days, you know, and back in the good old days, it, it, what, when, when there was a, huge issue dispute, uh, it, what they would do is throw everybody in a room and tell them, you know, you, you don't come out until you come out with a solution because making sausage was so different. And, and, and we talk about that, but there's a difference though that, that I see anyway, you know, given all my years, I don't even want to talk about how many years, but given my, my years of involvement. And that is that, in those days, they actually went in the room trying to figure out what was best for the public interest. It, it, they may have had all kinds of other interests uh, on play, but they came out and they felt somewhat compelled to do something that would be uh, generally good for everybody. And I, I don't see that happening anymore. I, I see a lot of tricks being played. I see a lot of things. But there's no good result at the end, you know? And I, I, I don't know, there's this cynicism. I, I, I don't know how much of it has to do with the last four years with having a president like Donald Trump who could get away with anything and having that infect some of our leaders or, or what would be uh, like putting a bill that was clearly turned down by another house for good policy reasons and trying to sneak it back out again in a bill that uh, would, you know, sort of ensure passage and no veto. I mean, how, how is that in the public interest? You know, and I, you know, I think sadly, uh, they still go into the room and talk. It's just the people in the room don't represent all of us. Uh, uh, they, they're not, uh, uh, low income workers are not in the room and their representatives are not in that room, in, in my opinion. Uh, the unemployed obviously aren't in that room and the people that represent them. Uh, access to power has evolved uh, more and more every, every year. It involves more toward money, more toward existing power, uh, big business, big labor. Construction. You know, but what's funny, Gary, is that uh, I, I can show you uh, some emails I got from lobbyists complaining about how bad it is, you know, and, and the other guys are supposed to benefit by this system, but they said, you know, they spent all their time trying not to irritate key people. 
otherwise the uh, nothing happened. I, no, it, it's probably worse than I think. Now, I mean, if you're bringing up, you know, talking to a greater cross section of the community, it's 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 probably much worse than I think. And and it is. It's this fear based decision making. Uh, no one wants to irritate or or be on the wrong side of key people, uh, because they're not sure what's going to happen. Uh, wow. You know, there's a great song in the play Hamilton about being in the room when the when the decisions are made. You know, <laughs> you got to be in the room, otherwise, right? You never know what's going on. Well, I tell you, I uh, I, I appreciate the work you're doing, Thank and you. I, I, and I do. Tell us just a, I, I, we got a couple minutes left. Tell us just a little bit more about. Some okay. of your activities, and, and so that people who are interested might be able to. So the know, Hawaii Alliance you. for Progressive Action, HAPA is the acronym, is the main nonprofit organization that. Uh, I also got Pono Hawaii Initiative up right. there. So, uh, Pono Hawaii Initiative is a five hundred one c four. There, the way nonprofits work, the the five hundred one c three HAPA is an educational. A nonprofit and the donations are tax deductible. If someone wants to contribute to that organization. Pono Hawaii Initiative is, is a stronger advocacy organization and the contributions are not tax deductible, but you're allowed to do more uh, advocacy. And so there's both organizations are they're separate in terms of their, their uh, uh, leadership, their boards and their budgets kind of thing. So the Pono Hawaii Initiative uh, we support candidates. We endorse candidates. Uh, we're looking right now at uh, 2022, and we're saying uh, if if you're not going to act like uh, a Democrat, even though it's we're we're not partisan per se, but if you if you aren't going to look after the people's interest and have hearings and vote in public, then perhaps we should find someone uh, to run against you. Uh, and well, that's, you know, well, that's the death of the democratic way. And, right. uh, we, you know, um, I got to thank you uh, for, for joining us today and, and for your service to, to the state of Hawaii. But, you know, uh, keep up the good work and uh, hopefully we'll have some sunshine. Thank someday. you very much for having me on the show. Thanks, today. Senator. I really appreciate you your presence. Take care. Oh, wow.